Okay, previously you have studied the discovery of electron and E by M ratio of electron and you also studied that J. J. Thomson could not find charge and mass independent of each other. All he could do is find the ratio of E by M. Now a few years later, Millikan performed an experiment in 1906 and he found out the charge of the electron independent of mass and hence the mass of electron because E by M ratio was known. Now let's see how he did it. Now this understanding this experiment will require a little bit of knowledge of electrostats. And I would recommend you, even if you have not studied, you still go through this video because you would actually realize the beauty of physics and how great discoveries can be made by simple experimental setup and intuition. Let's see how he did it. See, there's a chamber, cylindrical, and there are two plates, upper plate and lower plate. And there is an atomizer. Atomizer has some oil in it. And when you press this button, then the oil will come out like a spray, just like your body deodorant. And via this split in the upper plate, the oil will start its journey downward, like this. Now, when the oil is dropping downward, it experiences some force. If you draw the FBD of the oil, oil will come down obviously under the influence of gravity and the force is FG. Let me represent it as FG, the gravitational force. There will be another force called buoyant force. You have studied in class 8 perhaps the Archimedes principle. Whenever a body is partially or fully immersed in a fluid, it experiences some upward thrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Now fluid here is air. So some air will be displaced because oil will occupy some space and Hence, it will experience some buoyant force. Let me represent it as FB. There will be third force acting on the fluid. The third force will be drag force. Now drag force, see when the oil is coming down, it is actually pushing the air molecules, which is beneath it. And it is sort of colliding with air molecules. And in turn, air molecule is exerting some force on the oil and creating hindrance in its downward journey. It's a kind of frictional force. So due to the collision of uh, oil drop with air molecules, there is a force which is acting upward, which is hindering the journey of oil drop downward. That force is called drag force. You must have heard about drag force. You must have heard that the rain drop, which comes from up in the sky towards the ground, come with a constant velocity. The velocity of the rain drop do not keep on indefinitely increasing. The rain drop is falling under the force of gravity and the net force is downward. There will of course be a buoyant force, but the net force is still downward. And if there's a net force in particular direction, there will be acceleration. And if there's acceleration, then the velocity keeps on increasing. You know that. But the velocity do not keep on increasing. The raindrop comes with a constant velocity. The reason being there's a drag force and the drag force is proportional to velocity. The more the velocity, the more will be drag force. And that is intuitive because you see the drag force, as I have told you a moment back, is because of the collision. And if the velocity is more, then the number of collision per unit time will be more. And hence the drag force will increase. So the third force acting on this ball, on this oil drop, is the drag force, which is acting upward against the motion. Okay. Now, as I told you that the rain drop comes with a terminal velocity, with a constant velocity. Similarly, this oil drop will also come down with a constant velocity because Fg minus Fb will pull the oil drop downward. Now there's a drag force which doesn't want the oil drop to come down and it is exerted upward. Now Fg minus Fb will be constant because the gravitational force is constant. It doesn't depend on the position of the oil drop. So whether it is upward or downward, the gravitational force is going to remain constant. Similarly, the buoyant force is also constant. Buoyant force depends on the weight of the fluid displaced. And the weight of the fluid displaced will be remain same as long as the volume of the oil drop is the same. And we are assuming here that oil drop is a spherical ball, a spherical tiny ball, and the volume will remain constant during its course of journey. So the buoyant force is also remaining constant. But the drag force will depend on velocity okay so initially when the velocity is zero then there is only fg minus fb and the velocity is increasing and hence the drag force will also keep on increasing because velocity is increasing and at certain point of time this will be equal to the drag force and at that point of time net force will on the oil drop will be equal to zero and from that very moment the velocity will cease to increase because the net force is zero acceleration is zero 
and if the velocity is no more increasing then the drag force is no more increasing and it will remain equal to fg minus fb fine so at from that point of time the velocity will become constant and hence the oil drop very soon will acquire a terminal velocity a constant velocity so in that case these two forces will be equal okay so fg minus fb and i can write it as 4 pi 3 pi r cube rho minus root air into g fine see fg you know is m into g fine mass you know is volume into density volume you know is 4 by 3 pi r cube into density this is fg and fb you know is the weight of the fluid displaced weight of the fluid displaced will be equal to volume into density of the fluid the volume will be equal to the volume of the oil drop but the density will be equal to density of the fluid fluid here we are assuming is air so this is fg minus fb you can see through this it's easy this should be equal to drag force drag force i'll tell you there's a formula for a drag force it's given by stroke's law it is equal to 6 pi eta r into v so these two must be the same now see left hand side is a known uh, is not a known thing uh, if because r is not known but you can cancel this r this r with r cube and you can see that r square can be written as it can be written as 9 eta v upon 2g rho minus rho air right it can be written as like you just rearrange it so r squared is not known because uh, but volume volume th this is velocity let me call this as v1 because in the second part of the experiment we'll have another velocity that we'll name it as v2 so let's call it as v1 now since it's a simple experimental setup and as you would know from your experience of your school laboratory when the setup is simple then the human effort is more the human effort here will be required to find out this velocity it is coming with a terminal velocity a constant velocity fine so you have to find that out if you are able to find that out velocity then all these things are constant density of the oil you would know and density of the air you would know so knowing the velocity will give you the value of radius that is important because if you know the velocity and you know the radius then you know this quantity drag force the value of drag force you know and if you know the value of drag force then you know fg minus fb and fg minus fb will not change with velocity fine drag force will depend on velocity but if we have found out drag force for a particular situation for a particular given vnr then you can find fg minus fb now why i'm saying this you will understand gradually as we move on but for now you have to find v1 and finding v1 is will be a tedious task what you have to do is you have to put a telescope here you know why this telescope because uh, in order to see this tiny oil particle easily you have to use a telescope and using this telescope what you can do is you can measure the distance suppose there's a scale here then you can you know measure the distance which the oil drop is covering and the time it is requiring to cover that distance using that you can find the velocity by distance upon time you can find the velocity for one interval and then second interval and then third interval then you can check if the velocity is remaining constant and if it is then what is the value on that velocity so it will be a hectic thing but somehow in 1906 that was the easy way out and people did it and that's how Millikan did so this is how you will find the velocity and once you have the velocity then you know the r once you have v and r then you know drag force and hence you know fg minus fb so for our reference let me write fg minus fb equal to 6 pi eta r into v1 suppose the velocity that it has acquired under this situation is v1 and the radius is r then fg minus fb will remain this even if you change the velocity fine so this is done we have found out fg minus fb now what's next 